Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, I wanted to still continue in spite of the glitch um, with the topic on bedwetting. Okay, so check. Number one, we said look into the history of bedwetting in the child's family. Number two, find out how, can you track, track how often the child wets their bed, okay? The quad, and then is it like a really wet night or is just patches, patches on their, on their beddings? So history, tracking it down and then we were looking at by the way do you know the type of food like just monitor what are the types of food that they are eating if it is high on uh, sodium high on salt especially after school or close to bedtime if they are on it's the weekend or holidays just monitor like for a week and i was mentioning that how do, do, try and tackle one thing at a time don't don't chew the entire elephant at once don't eat don't take one huge bite like on one week, the first week you can monitor about the water intake. Another week you can look at the food. And so step by step, okay? So uh, I've just mentioned about water intake. So you have looked into the food. You have seen, okay, what are they eating? Is it high in salt and the rest? Now, another thing that you need to monitor is water intake. And especially after or close to bedtime. Why am I emphasizing on close to bedtime? Because one thing you should not restrict it a child to do is take water water intake should not be restricted it should not be that the entire day they stay thirsty so that the body does not have any water to produce at night for and all that you get my drift so if it's in the morning let them drink if it's during school time if they have their water bottle if they need to go if they have pe uh, physical exercises if that's allowed within this um this uh, period that we are in of the pandemic when it comes to um they are active like they are the tomboy they are up and about they're energetic and all that let them drink water what you need to monitor is how, how much water are they drinking close to bedtime so it's recommended that if two hours and that's where now even a routine comes into place like is there a routine do they know at what time do they go to bed yes even the, over the weekends there is usually a standard time on during the holidays terms and conditions apply but when it comes to them going to bed at what time do they do you need them to be in bed do you need them because uh, they change the rules yes they do so by the time you're saying bedtime is 8 30 it's 7 not 7 p.m 8 30 it's 9 p.m depending on the age of the child two hours before their bedtime is when they should take their like, like a, a quantity a large quantity of water and the, the how i would use it is let them have instead of having gulps of water let them have sips of water and this is where now you're looking at the food that they are eating and they have been taking water during the day so even by the time they are approaching bedtime and you need to talk to the child about this and also the guardians around them so that you can all be on the same age so they take sips and not gulps of water mainly it's you're trying to help the body to process whatever water it needs to do the kidney to do its part and then by the time they are going to bed because it's we are trying not to interrupt their sleep because it's not the best thing to be interrupted uh, sleep-wise for them to go to the toilet. So we are trying as much as possible that the water they are taking before bed is, is reduced, not limited. It's reduced. So let them drink water during the day. If they are playing after school, they have done their homework, they go out and play, let them have that water. And then two hours before bedtime, let them be taking sips and not gulps. Gulps is like this big tumbler of water or whatever it's juice, or juice, soda, whatever it is. So monitor the water intake, especially as you head towards bedtime. Okay. Now, so you have looked at the history. You have looked at the water intake. You have looked at the food intake. As I said, step by step you're monitoring this is something you want for like it's a lifelong um habit that you want to sustain so don't rush it okay and involve the child family history water intake food intake and track is it a, a dry night when it's a dry night what was different about that day is it that they they were not in school is it that they were in school is it that they do not drink water what they see like it's just monitor for a week or two and find out what happens during the dry nights 
what happens during the wet nights. And then on the wet night, is it like a flood or is it just a drizzle? I'm using those you feel just phrases. Is it a lot or is it just kidogo? I'm hoping you're understanding that. So you're looking into that, and as I mentioned, let it let let the tracker be somewhere where the child can get involved. And another thing that you do is please don't shame the child. Don't shame the child. Why am I saying don't shame the child? It's not their fault. They're not doing it intentionally. So another thing that you do, or I would, I would recommend is, I believe there's something called a Macintosh. I mean, I look around, there's usually that where you have like a waterproof bed sheet or waterproof um, beddings. Now, the, the, the uh, suggestion is, if indeed they do have wet nights, why not have a bed sheet below the Macintosh or the waterproof um, bedding in between and then another bed sheet on top? Why? If they do have a wet night, you get the top, especially during the night, you will get rid of what is on top, get the Macintosh, and then you still have another sheet ready. And hopefully that can transition all the way to morning because hardly do they wet their bed that often. So what do you do? You are trying to minimize this chaos that happens uh, about the beddings. And then when they wake up and they are all uh, wet and they have, mm, they have wet the bed, how do they take care of themselves hygiene-wise? Cleaning up is important because remember, if they go to school smelling like urine, because we all know, and yes, I know, we all know, there's a way urine can stick on you and it is not pleasant. Why am I saying this? Is because everybody has that biological process. So I'm not here second guessing anything. So if they don't shower nicely, if they don't clean up, who will know that there is something amiss um, in the, 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 the what? Remember your urine, or when it comes to urine, is their friends, their colleagues, who they are sitting next to in the bus or in the matatu or in class. So how do they take care of their beddings? So this is their... They are owning it. They're taking responsibility. And then how do they take care of their beddings and how do they take care of themselves? Cleaning up nice and soap is very important, not just water. They don't rush it, especially boys. And keep in mind, bedwetting is mostly found in boys more than in girls. So the boys, and I'm not here pointing fingers because even girls sometimes have that issue. Boys may not really want to shower as much, especially as they're growing up. So please emphasize the, the aspect of hygiene, 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 hygiene. So please don't uh, shame them. The other siblings, especially if they have siblings who are not wetting their bed, either they're older or younger, be, be very careful that you are not shaming them in front of their siblings and that the siblings are not making fun of them. Are we understanding that? So we are trying to create an atmosphere of Okay, yes, it's happening, but can we manage it? And as I keep on emphasizing, please have a conversation with the child and also with the family so that everybody is on board. When people are eating crisps and this other child is not eating crisps and people are drinking water, they are not drinking water. So everybody can be on board to help out. Good? So now those are tips for a child who has been continually wetting the bed. Okay? Like... You cannot remember a week or a month going by without them wetting the bed. So please follow that. Now, my F, another thing that we, another aspect, especially now when it comes to psychology, uh, is if the child has not been wetting their bed and then suddenly, suddenly they start wetting their bed. That could be a sign of regression. Regression is where you go back. Short and sweet. That's basically how I can put it. So my question is, please monitor, is it that the child has been wetting their bed? And if they have, then you follow the tips that I've shared in this video and the previous one, which I'll link up. If they have been having dry nights, like they are 12 years old, they are 9 years old, they, and they have not been wetting their bed, and then suddenly, suddenly they start wetting their bed, there is something amiss. And what is this something amiss? It could be a change. It could be a source of anxiety. It could be a stressor. And these are the types of stressors I'm talking about. Find out or look into the child's life or the family. Has someone been sick? Has someone passed on? Has someone died? 
has a child been sick or is it now or someone close to them has been sick have they moved house recently or has has have they have you changed the house girl recently like we had a house manager and then suddenly someone has changed have they gone to a new school have they gone to a new class have they gotten a new sibling like they were the only kid or they were the what do you call it they were the honorary last born and then there's a new child uh it could be it could be what they are a friend has moved out basically try and look into the lives of a child has there been something traumatic were they in a car accident was there something um maybe a something like maybe there was a break-in when it comes to to the um, to theft or robbery was there maybe some case of violence around the house something happened did they did they observe domestic violence like did they see their father or mother fighting so this why am i using these different examples it's because something has happened in that child's life it could even be about sexual abuse and the rest but something has changed and that thing that has changed has caused them anxiety and because children are still yet to get the language of saying i am I'm not in a good space. What does the body do? It reacts. And one of the ways of dealing with anxiety is wetting the bed because maybe they were anxious the entire day. So they held everything in. And then when you are relaxing, when you're in bed is when all systems are flowing. So if a child suddenly starts wetting the bed, that's where now you need to be more vigilant with what is happening in the child's environment. And this is where I come in. Talk to me, call, call me, text me, email me, and we shall see how to do that. Because I am here for you, creating the village that you need, that is slowly disappearing with this containment and all the issues that uh, come with modernization and, and all that. So my, 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 my end, ah, my closing statements. Ah, yes, here we go. Is when it comes to bed wetting, please try and understand it as much as possible and don't shame the child. Because, um, ladies and gentlemen, as I said in my previous video, uh, 50% of uh, genetics that landed in that dude 